Okay, we just, you know, we're getting that in, as you have just heard before the break. Standard Bank uh, Investment uh, Research Notes just released says the um, uh, Moody's Investors Services rating downgrade of Nigeria was a belated one and that the issues raised by Moody's uh, in that uh, report on late on Wednesday uh, had always been raised by IMF and other uh, agencies and, and says the rating action has no, uh, has no effect. Uh, on Nigeria, and that's coming from Standard Bank, and that's in, in line with what the uh, Debt Management Office yesterday issued a note or a statement on behalf of the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank of Nigeria saying that they fought the premise upon which the uh, Moody's Investor Services downgraded Nigeria's sovereign issuer uh, rating from B1 to B2, however, with a stable outlook. Now, this uh, report from uh, Standard Bank is just supporting what the Nigerian government says and said this report is of no consequence at all. Let's move on. Look at the uh, market yesterday. The oil and gas, the big seven, remain largely muted despite uh, some uh, investors uh, or research uh, firms discussions around uh, Seplat, which uh, whose numbers are at the marketplace and uh, some of them still uh, rating this particular oil and gas uh, company. But you can see it's all grey shoots. It does a finished lackluster uh, midweek Wednesday. Uh, for this oil and gas, it looks like they were not, uh, the investors were not, felt there was nothing in the budget for these folks. So, uh, but of course, there was no discussion about the, uh, about uh, what you call the uh, outstanding payment of, of petrol subsidies uh, in the uh, budget. Uh, so, those everyone, folks just felt, uh, let's just uh, keep quiet, shall we? And that was all that happened uh, on, on Wednesday. But, of course, there's some, there was something in there for the consumer goods. So, you saw. Uh, the consumer goods sector uh, make, uh, responded uh, to, to that uh, budget. And that's why we're having part of this conversation with uh, Adaya Konobi, who is back here uh, from the last time she was here on Tuesday uh, to discuss the consumer uh, space uh, for us. Good morning. Good morning. Bob. There's something in this budget for anyone who wants to build roads, build house, and put food on his table. So it's understandable that the stock market, the oil and gas was just quiet. Everybody seemed to be more interested in the, the roof over my head mm -hmm. and uh, the food on my table. Yes. So, so what are the burning issues uh, this morning as you folks put heads together and begin to digest this budget and other economic news? Well, the president came out on, I mean, the president presented the 2018 um, medium-term economic framework, the budget, and basically to the National Assembly. And this is about 16% higher than what, um, 2017. And the last time we spoke, most of the budget assumptions that I listed out were somewhat accurate. And um, so it is, it is kind of... It, it, so everyone is working towards that, but then the good news is that the budget deficit is, um, um, well, the, de the deficit is uh, lower compared to um, 2017. So it seems like it's in line with the economic recovery and growth plan that the government is trying to push forward. They're trying to reduce cost um, borrowing and uh, deficit so far. Uh, in terms of where are the key issues right now? Uh, yes, yeah, we have the budget. Mm -hmm. Where are the key uh, economic issues? Well, I just want to see if you can put that up there on the screen and go through it. Well, you've mentioned Moody's uh, downgrading Nigeria's credit rating to B plus with a positive outlook, mm -hmm. with a stable outlook actually. Oil prices is still trading above uh, sixty-three dollars per barrel, and um, yeah, so those are basically that's what's you know that's what's moving the market right now. Those those news. The news. Are we um, the narrow remain unchanged? Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll be a little bit gain at the INE window. Yes. The external reserves, you think that's a very oh, comfortable a piece of news? That's fantastic. We see external <laughs> reserves now as high as $34, uh, $34 million, billion, dollars. billion dollars, and that's fantastic. We haven't reached that in a, quite a while. So that means, you know, there's, there seems to be some sort of forex, forex inflows coming in, mm -hmm. and it seems to be plug, they seem to be plugging lots of... Uh, Closing lots of loopholes that we've that, that we had initially, so there's more management, and because of that, we are seeing the naira somewhat stable at 363. Although it could get it, it could go better, but so far everything's um, not very good in the forex market. Um, how do we take the budget and and this uh, all this into the marketplace when you talk about consumer goods? Because what to everyone who is uh, in production mm -hmm. of consumer goods will be looking at right now is what is in this budget for me. Um, how do you think the consumer goods market, consumer goods will react? One, from the producer side. Mm -hmm. uh, two, from those who would need to make purchases, which you call consumer spending. 
So now if you look at the budgets and say we're working with the oil spot price of oil right now, which is say 60. So if you look at our production, uh, um, projected production at 2.3, which I'm not sure we're going to achieve that, seeing OPEC's cap of 1.8, but say that's there. So there's going to be definitely an expansion because we are multiplying um, um, production and price, and that's going to give us a lot more. So we're going to have some more money going to excess uh, crude account. So there's going to be room for savings. So we're going to save about $15. Um, $15 or so, given the uh, projection at 40, 45 and spot price at 60 So typically what that means is that there's going to be reduced borrowing, there's go um, and if there's going to be reduced uh, cost of borrowing, interest rates are going to come down, that's going to kind of spur growth in the private sector. So given all this, given pri um, oil prices are about 16 in 2018, so what that means is in the long run, this is going to kind of trickle down to the consumer market, so there's going to be increased disposable income, and if there's revived growth in the private sector, there's going to be more borrowing because the interest rate environment is going to be kind of favorable. It's going to be forex inflows, cost of importation will somewhat ease. So everyone is going to be happy. So government is going to pay off um, arrears, salary arrears, so there's more disposable income and the economy is going to revive back. So yeah, the, what the, the, the president also spoke about uh, there's going to be payment of promotions. Yes. Uh, especially in the security agencies. Yes, uh, exactly. Some folks who I'm sure who are going to smile, you know. If I others uh, perhaps outstanding mm -hmm. uh, promotions will be paid yeah. in 2018. That with that kind of news, some folks may just decide to spend an extra out of what they already have because there is an idea that more money is coming into the account. Well, I'd be cautious. You know, you still have to still save for the <laughs> rainy day. But so far, 2018 seems like it's going to be, it seems positive. It's not it's a year as before election. Yeah, and that and Traditionally, and that we, and a lot spend, of uncertainty. we spend money. <laughs> yes, we when do spend money. When it's a guest election, yeah. money comes out. Exactly. So, so that's something else we have to actually, you know, put in place. There's more money. There's mm. going to be a lot more. There's going to be a lot of money in circulation and we're going into 2018 and the